Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 1st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we actually got two interesting diaries today to talk about uh, one by Xavier about how to harvest your IMAP inbox for indicators of compromise. Use case here is, for example, if you are subscribing to a number of security mailing lists, you may have uh, lots of emails that, for example, have lists of IP addresses or domain names. Similar, if you direct all of your spam to an inbox like this, then any URL for example, that are mentioned in spam could be used as indicators of compromise or, for example, in block lists. All it takes is a Docker image that Xavier came up with and he published the Docker file as part of his diary that will help you set up a Docker image that will grab the email via IMAP, parse it, extract any indicators of compromise, but also include things like the from and the subject and create a JSON file that then can readily, for example, be imported into Elasticsearch. Pretty neat a little setup, so probably some of you may find this helpful. And Jim noticed that about a week ago, we had a sudden jump in reports for attacks against port 9,673. Of course, this is not necessarily a port that sort of rings a bell. Well, uh, some searches did lead Jim to a psych cell survey of vulnerability that was published last month. And it looks like the bad guys are fully starting to exploit it now. The vulnerability is a pretty straightforward uh, command injection vulnerability via the accept language header. So you'll find a simple shell script there that will then typically download additional malware and execute it. Radware did identify this as the hoax calls uh, denial of service botnet. Probably also others that are being distributed via this method. The botnet doing the scanning doesn't really look that uh, super large. It's around uh, 600, 700 hosts uh, per day uh, at its peak and sort of slowly decaying. So hopefully uh, this attack is running a little bit out of steam as they are pretty much exhausting the set of vulnerable routers out there. And then we got a new vulnerability in a tool called Salt by company SaltStack. And now Salt is available in an open source version as well as a commercial version and is typically used to automate infrastructure, so to automate configuration deployments and the like. Now, in order to use Salt, you typically set up a master server that will communicate with what they call minions, essentially agents that are installed on systems that are being configured via Salt. Now, the problem here is with the master server and their Two problems that were discovered by F-Secure. One was an authentication bypass and a second one, a directory traversal vulnerability that can actually then lead to a full exploit of the system because via this directory traversal vulnerability, it is then possible to read and write files. So the combination of the authentication bypass and the directory traversal vulnerability can lead to a complete compromise and of course, course, once the master server is compromised, all the minions may, for example, pick up bad configurations from this master server. Now, a patch is available. SaltStack also highly recommends that you don't expose the master server to the internet. But then again, they're also using it, for example, to uh, control cloud components and the like. And that makes it, of course, difficult to outright block all external access. But uh, you should at the very least sort of only whitelist certain IP addresses and allow only those to connect to your master server. And I just looked at our data and I see a small increase, not really significant yet, in scans against port 4004 and 4005. Now, as far as I know, there is no actual proof of concept exploit out there. F-Secure luckily hasn't published anything yet, but uh, quite a bit of details here as to which function is exactly vulnerable and such. So it may not really take that long for someone to figure out how to exploit this. 
And developer Jeff Johnson discovered an interesting sandbox bypass in Mac OS. Now, the way it was originally described wasn't really all that terribly exciting. Essentially, the way he sort of described it at first was that if you allow your application to control the text editor that comes with Mac OS, then your application can use the text editor to actually break out of a sandbox. Now, this of course requires a click where the user is being asked whether or not they would allow an application to control text editor. And that of course may raise some flags, but turns out the problem is a little bit serious than just uh, launching a text edit. Turns out there's an entitlement com.apple.security.files.user-selected.executable. Any application that has this entitlement is able to essentially create scripts outside of its sandbox. There are a number of applications inside the Mac App Store, like for example, BB Edit, another editor that do possess this entitlement. So it's not really a problem so much with text edit, really more a problem with this entitlement that it has sort of these somewhat unintended consequences. Well, that's it for today. And if you're sort of sick of sitting at home all day and uh, doing your job like from your home office, well, uh, there is actually a little bit of distraction for you in that we are offering now pretty much all of our classes in the live online format. So you can take them from home. Also, all the SANS Fire classes will uh, be offered in this format. And uh, we will have some teasers actually sort of coming up these next a couple of weeks. Now I'm actually just uh, finishing up a run uh, with the intrusion detection depth class uh, this week and worked out actually uh, pretty well. So uh, take a look at this and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.